Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a comparison I've looked forward to doing for quite a while. It's no secret that Synology have released four of their biggest disk station releases for a very long time now in summer 2020. But as much as I compare the old versus the new and brand versus brand and software versus software, there's no avoiding the fact that the two-bay prosumer device, the 720, is probably the biggest deviation over its predecessor than any device that came before it. Not just in terms of internal hardware, but externally as well. There's been a lot of change between these two devices, and given there's nearly three years of release difference between them, the weirdest thing is that the price is so close. There is barely 20 quid between these two devices on the table and there's nearly three years of release difference so you can take your tax your inflation and do what you want with it because apparently these two arrive at basically the same price so in today's video we want to look at a few things normally we would compare these NASs, and i'm not really going to talk about the software too much because if you're watching this you already know a lot about synology NAS software and dsm and if you don't look at my other videos i've covered it a lot today i want to work out why these two are so different what do they offer that another one doesn't? And ultimately, which one deserves your data? Now, the first thing that strikes me about these two devices is the aesthetical design changes that have happened in three years. I know, obviously, the big one that you probably already know about, or is maybe it's already on screen, is the fact this has got NVMe bays. But we will get to that, but not quite yet. What I want to talk about is the change in the chassis. When the 718 was first released, it was released within a very short window with NASs like the DS228 uh, Plus, uh, the DS918 Plus, the 418 Play, and all of those NASs looked the same. They all had a, basically the same chassis. This was the only one that was different because it featured some things that were only available at the enterprise level. So, case in point, it's a metal chassis. Secondly, the Synology logo on the inside utilised a mesh metal panel inside. Now, if you look at the newer generation device, firstly, it's plastic. Secondly, that logo has been replaced with a vent. It's just a vent on the inside, not metal, just plastic chassis and plastic vent. So they ditched the metal framework here and replaced it with that plastic framework and changed the inside now. Now this metal framework and mesh internal panel <clears throat> actually only features in enterprise grade solutions like the 1819, uh, the uh, 1517 I think, the 5 bay solution and basically the big end this station NAS is. Only, this is the only 2 bay and probably the last 2 bay that's ever going to have that. The same goes for the aesthetic design on the front. Now the newer generation device seemingly has less is more going on it's got the two leds at the top and it's got a usb port on the front but no copy button the older generation device has got far more spacing on those leds it's got individual leds on the trays it has those leds on the side it has a usb port and a copy button and even the trays look a little nicer on the older generation device if we look at the way the trays eject as well on the older generation device we can tap it nothing comes but you've got to flick it up and then it comes out and there's a bit of spring loaded there. The older generation, we just tap the tray and the tray is open. The spring is a little bit more responsive and it's a heavier, denser tray. In fact, the whole device is just a little bit weightier. Now, a lot of that comes down to production quality, of course, and the aesthetical overhaul design of the device, but you do feel like the 718 has got a bit more production uh, cost in terms of its hardware. Now, the next thing to look at is the inside. Now, if you look at the 720, you can see that memory module there, the SODIMM slot. This device has got two gig of memory and you can upgrade it with another four. And on the other side, we've got a little bit of ventilation and the fan at the rear. The older generation device has got two sodium slots there's one at the top you can just make that out it has two separate memory module slots inside it arrives with two gig of memory but you can unofficially upgrade it to eight gig with two four gig sticks on top of that the inside doesn't have that metal framework the internals you can see 
the CPU and its heat sink near there. Maybe that's not a good thing. Who knows? Because maybe you would want that panel protecting the controller board on the inside. But the idea of removing the second memory module is something we've discussed already. The fact that the newer generation of Synology, their baseline um, memory is soldered to the board. Only the upgrade slot is accessible. So in any unit that has a default volu um, volume of memory at 2 or 4 gig, that 2 or 4 gig is soldered to the board in individual chips. So that's another area where I think one could argue things have changed and whether you think a separate sodium or soldered board, there's advantages for both, both in terms of latency or upgradability, but there's definitely big design choices between them. Even if you look at the rear of these devices, if we turn them round and we look at them there, you can see that the older generation device, sorry, has two LAN ports, it's got two USB 3 ports and it's got that eSATA expandable port. The newer generation has only got the one USB. They're both one GBE. There's been no improvement there in terms of LAN connectivity, but there's more USB on the older one. And remember, these devices are basically at the same price. So right now, you're wondering, wait, so the older generation device has got more sodium slots, it's got more USB ports, it's a metal chassis instead of plastic, and it has better ventilation slots and better trays. So the 20 quid difference, by the way, this is the cheaper one as well, by the way, where exactly has that money gone? Well, it goes into several things. It goes into the CPU, the memory, and the SSD bays. First and foremost, the CPU inside these devices are both Intel, but the newer generation device has a better processor. There's no avoiding it, for the most part. The older generation had the Intel Celeron J3455, a third generation, um, uh, 1.5 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz per core and it arrives with 2 gig of DDR3L memory 1866 megahertz that can be upgraded officially to 6 gig so 2 inside you can add a 4 the newer generation device has a 4th generation Celeron in the J4 um, 1, 2, 5. Quad core, 2.0 gigahertz, that can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz, so higher base, higher clock. It also supports 2 gig of DDR4 memory at 2,666 megahertz, which can be upgraded to 6 gig. So higher frequency CPU, more capable CPU, higher frequency memory. But if those all on their own weren't already producing a higher, frequent, uh, higher internal performance, the base of the device has got those two NVMe bays based into them. That means by installing one or two um, M2 NVMe SSDs inside these bays will result in vastly improved internal performance, whether that's read only, write only, or read and write cache. Something that the older generation NAS just does not have. Now, there are arguments on both sides. I personally love the fact this has got NVMe on it, but I know some of you out there do point out the inherent difficulties, first and foremost. You install those SSD for greater performance, great, but you're only improving the performance on two disks, which even with enterprise grade hard drives, you're not gonna be looking at more than 400 megs, maybe 450 at a push. On top of that, you're limited to one and two GBE. So you're not gonna see that performance externally outside of graphical rendering, which you're still only gonna see over a one GBE connection. There's no 2.5 GBE, there's no upgradability, there's no USB to LAN adapter. And a lot of those improvements are great for internal speeds, but you might not see those differences. Now, I'm not suggesting that you would see the differences on the older gen, but if you're only a single or one to three users, you're not gonna notice that difference anyway. And the CPU on this device, although it's out and outperformed in almost every way in transcoding and 4k performance the older generation device actually performs better for h265 8 and 10 bit media hevc which may be a problem if your most of your library of media whether it's for native transcoding or plex media server transcoding is going to factor that format what i'm saying is if I have to choose between these two devices, I would choose the new one. I would, because it's got more longevity, it's got a much higher glass ceiling. You get, although they're both three years of manufacturer's warranty, I think this has got more future-proofing in it. But why did they have to drop this lovely chassis? Why did they have to change this? If it is because they had to keep the cost down, fine. But add 2.5 GBE or something, you know? Because the 718 is still a great NAS, and if you own it, 
there's no need to upgrade right now. It's a great little NAS that brings a lot to the party and is still one of the best two bays I've ever seen. But the 720, despite that great inclusion of um, M2 NVMe SSDs inside and that new CPU, it's done with slight changes and one might argue compromises in other areas. But it really is up to you what you look for in your storage. You're not gonna be looking at this device much. In most cases, you're gonna set it up and forget it. And when you are using it, you're not gonna look at it. But that's up to you and what you think is a priority in your NAS purchase. So whichever one appeals to you the most, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more and visit the links to NAS Compares in the description for more information on these NASs and how they compare with the rest of the devices in 2020. I'll see you next time.